Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine Game series and our Crazy Leela series. And I've got a treat for you. Would this maybe be the first Queen Obs game that has ever been analysed on any channel anywhere? Even in any book somehow, I don't know really, but Queen Obs is not very common somehow. And uh, well, Queen Obs played at this level, certainly not. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's the Knight Odds uh, bot uh, on Lee Chess, there's the um, uh, the Rook Odds bot on Lee Chess, and there's also a Queen Odds bot. And um, it's recently had um, a big upgrade. Um, so uh, instead of using the Knight Odds uh, uh, neural net to play Queen Odds as well, they've uh, trained a specific Queen Odds neural net. And the results are just absolutely incredible. I mean, basically, it looks like anyone rated about 2200, 2300 on Lee Chess is going to struggle to um, uh, to make 50%. Um, and even those above are, are not exactly winning that easily either. Um, the games are absolutely amazing, actually. It's just incredible what Leela is doing with its pieces. So I'm going to show you a few. I'm going to start off with actually one of the less spectacular ones. So when you've seen the game, I think you'll understand that, wow, what are the rest like? Um, this one's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, the ones I've come across uh, just by watching now, uh, loads and loads of games are just amazing. So let's have a look how it goes. So B3. From Leela. Leela plays everything yeah, with uh, with Queen Odds. Um, presumably Leela sort of feels that um, yeah, pretty much everything in principle is um, is not great, but there's just one imperative, which is to open lines, funnily enough, a bit counterintuitive. You know, if I was thinking I'm playing against somebody with a queen, I'd try and keep it tight. No, open lines, let the pieces breathe. And uh, that's what Leela's doing. So Bishop B2, Knight C6, and now F4. Birds, very, very popular without a queen um so knight f6 e3 e6 yeah not uh, the world's uh, best development here um the opponent's rated this opponent was rated um about 1900 on um on lee chess so you know perfectly good player um but um yeah you know just um not at the very highest level of course um yeah in general you know developing a knight on c6 in front of a pawn is um uh, it's not the best way of playing. Normally you play the pawn to c5 first and then play the knight c6 behind it. But, you know, obviously you're a queen up, right? So it's not going to be crucial. So knight f3, bishop d6. And now, can you guess what Leela did in this position? I wonder. Um, uh, this is uh, something that Leela's doing a lot. Um, I mean, basically, you know, whenever... You see in all the games where Leela's playing with odds that um, it's the use of the pawn structure that's really, really key. And Leela's doing some amazing things with uh, with pawns, gaining space, restricting pieces. It's like magic, basically. It's always been one of Leela's strengths, actually, um, in normal chess, uh, that uh, it's a uh, use of pawn structure. And yeah, strangely enough, I wasn't expecting it to uh, to mean very much in odds chess, but it definitely is. So Leela played the move rook g1 here. And uh, the idea is just to play g4 to g5. So we're going to use our pawns to uh, um, attack the um, the black pieces and try and get them onto uh, to slightly dodgy squares. b6 from black, g4. Um, and the funny thing is, is that, you know, I always play engine games uh um, you know, at, um, at all different points from the uh, from the game, just to see what you know normal engines are thinking. And the funny thing is, is that up till this point, the engines have just been resigning straight away on move six or seven, um, which I think just goes to show, you know, the magic that um, that uh, the Leela programmers have done with Leela, because normal engines are just resigning, saying oh, nothing in this at all, and Leela's just playing this and uh, you know winning games against uh, pretty strong players. So yeah, you know. Um, yeah, something special, this uh, this odds chess. So after bishop b7, white played g5, and here black played knight e4. Um, knight h5 is possible, but, um, well, you do see this a lot in the odds games, and then, you know, this knight somehow getting lost. So um, it's not such a bad idea to play the knight round to, uh, to e4. Okay, we're going to lose a pawn, but it's a pawn, and you've still got a queen. So d3 played uh, by um, by Leela here, um, and now knight c5, moving the knight back, bishop takes g7, rook g8, bishop f6, 
So Leela just um, um, tempting black to play the move bishop e7, which black does, and then bishop back to b2. I think the idea of moving the bishop back to e7 is just to um, stop black from uh, having the idea of playing for e6 to e5. I mean, you know, you want to... Uh, um, yeah, you know, you want to uh, to stop black from from thinking about counterplay. Now, it's interesting. I mean, if you put the um, the engines um, onto uh, uh, onto this, they're looking at, you know, concrete tactical solutions like knight b4, for example, hitting this one here and then d4. Um, opening up the line of the um, of the bishop and after knight d4 playing e5 here. And, um, you know, what's the idea? Well, the idea is that if f takes e5, you go rook g5. You're just breaking stuff up, basically. That's the idea. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, um, what can you say? Yeah? I mean, <laughs> white's the queen down. It's not like you can avoid this stuff. But obviously, you know, it's it's needing some, some good tactical vision, some good awareness, um, and some good positional judgment about what you need to do in the position in order to do this. Um, and yeah, you know, I mean, I think that um, uh, if you're able to see stuff like that, um, then yeah, you know, you've you, you've shown a, a certain amount of uh, of chess quality somehow, right? You've shown a, a really good level. Um, and certainly, you know, if you couldn't do it before, but then you know, playing odds against Leela, you start spotting this stuff, then I think you've probably made a really big improvement in your level. And so that's uh, that's the idea. Right? Just bear in mind as well. I should mention, uh, or maybe you haven't mentioned that enough, there, that the the reason that the Leela guys are doing this, it's in their blog, is that they say, you know, human against uh, engine chess is not interesting anymore. And that's absolutely true, right? I mean, uh, humans just get absolutely killed. But this is a way to let human players play against uh, engines um, with a much more level playing field um, without crippling the engine, without making it play odd moves or give away pieces, right? Um, you just um, made the engine so good that it finds interesting ways to fight, even with material uh, deficit. And then, uh, yeah, you know, the human player, in principle, just has to show his quality, you know. So it's really, really nice. Um, so h6 played by black, um, trying to fight, you know, the... Uh, uh, the wedge that white has got trying to fight that space advantage not a bad idea but leela um, isn't taking any pawns leela plays h4 and black plays hg and white plays f takes g5 strange enough none of the other engines want to play this but yeah from a human perspective thinking you know how would i try and create the most imbalance i'd definitely say well we'll do it and we'll keep our h pawn for later so black tries to, to fight back, which is not bad there, tries to um, to break open that structure. But yeah, g6 now. And um, I mean, this reminds me very much, to be honest, of my experiences playing shogi um, uh, and uh, playing shogi odds, you know, against engines as well. Um, I've done that, I think. Yeah. You know, or um, uh, um, I don't know whether they were good engines or not, but they still, you know, they still beat me. I was um, something like um online at least which is where i played most of my show yeah i was uh sort of one dan two dan which is probably around you know uh this sort of rating maybe a, a a tiny bit higher you know and um what i was always noticing was that um i always felt like i was a move too late right i mean uh you know i was saying getting the good idea of breaking up uh the opponent's structure but then i was late and then he was just able to keep his structure you know and uh survive to fight another day and this is what leela's doing leela's just keeping some of its advantages and yeah of course you know black's probably got loads of ways of uh, of getting at the white position with some sharp tactics or whatever but yeah you know you've still got to find them and still got to uh to make the effort every single time and uh yeah here um you know leela's opponent is is struggling to do that so e5 and now h5 so yeah these pawns are running right um Stockfish Torch point out Bishop F8, which is a good idea, you know, coming round to uh, to H6. That would be a, a good idea. Although the fact that you've played E5 means you've got to watch out for these uh, Knight H4 to F5 ideas, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, Leela would certainly find a way to create danger there. So Queen D7 and Leela's playing H6. I mean, I think, you know, just notice as well what how Leela's done this, right? Because Leela hasn't prioritized development you might think um you know uh well you're you, you haven't got a queen you know get your king safe and then have a look what you can do but no leela's just going for as much gains as possible you know and um trusting that leela obviously with you know computer uh calculation 
will be able to keep its king safe. And um, yeah, I mean, this is obviously one of the great things that uh, that Leela brings to uh, odds play that, that a human player like me, I would find tricky. I'd find probably, you know, a number of interesting ideas, maybe if I'd had the idea of you've got to go for it as quickly as possible. But um, yeah, I w I'd probably, uh, you know, not be able to keep my king half as safe and uh, and allow lots of things along the way. Um, so Eve castles from black and now H7. Crazy, right? But uh, basically, Leela's already getting a rook back. But, I mean, still, the engines are assessing the position at minus 5.94. Uh, so still an absolutely massive winning advantage for black. But yeah, Leela's equalized uh, uh, the odds just a little bit more. And of course, for a human player, the human player saying, well, what's happening to me? I mean, how can this, you know, I, I, I haven't done anything too crazy. And yet, you know, I'm, I'm faced with pawns on uh, H7 and G6 already. So um, e4, d takes e4, knight takes e4. The engines want to play d takes e4, but yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, white plays knight d4 and you've still got to, uh, you're not breaking through yet. You know, it's, I'm not saying that it's, um, uh, that it's uh, necessarily uh, dangerless for, um, uh, for white, but, um, but you're not breaking through yet. So d takes c4, knight takes c4 played, which is a, a decent move. Yeah? The knight's active. You're going to get um, ideas like uh, bishop c5, um, um, you know, bishop c5, bishop b4 check. Uh, you've got access to uh, to e5 now for the knight. You know, the queen can come to f5. You know, I mean, should still be pretty good, right? So dealer plays knight bd2, not even taking that rook. I mean, black could try and save the rook, right, with uh, with rook g7 or something like that. But um, yeah, Leela somehow likes the um, uh, the two pawns like that. So knight takes d2, knight takes d2, and now black played uh, the knight to e5. So black, yeah, presumably thought that rook was gone anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, you could try and save it, but um, yeah, it's fine. Takes, takes. Black is still at minus 5.35 here. So castle queen side. But yeah, you know, I mean, um, uh, there's all sorts of, uh, you know, things you could do here. I mean, you could look to take this um, this uh, uh, this pawn. I mean, why not? Um, but um, but OK, you know, I mean, uh, if you probably take, if you take with a rook on g6, I'll probably go rook h1, try and get into h8 or get into h7. Keep the pressure going, new um, ways of uh, putting pressure on the black position. And still, you know, black still has to win the game, right? Because, you know, white is not going to just fall over by itself. You know, the king is safe. You don't have any attacking possibilities. You've just got more material. So long term, you should be winning. But yeah, you still got to prove the win. So black plays bishop c5, which is a sensible move, attacking e3. And now an incredibly sneaky move from white, rook h1. Um, it's the move anyway, right, that, uh, that white wants to play. Um, it's not just a trap. Um, the point is, you know, the g-pawn, you're not going to push it through. There's too much uh, stuff attacking it. So what white wants to do is uh, to use the h-file that, uh, that he can get. And, uh, well, it's either going to be, um, you know, the pawn supporting the rook on h7 or, yeah, you know, maybe if black took rook g6, of course, rook h8 check would work. But that's what white wants to do. You know, Leela's just abandoning that g-pawn. It's got everything it could out of those two uh, pawns out of, you know, the tempi that it spent pushing. It got a rook back, right? So uh, not bad. Now, now time to move on to something else again that's the thing that um that's uh you know that that's particularly special about leela at um with these sort of odds is that uh you know when i've um the closest thing i've really come to this is um is playing um uh, simuls where you know you sort of um you're always in a in a light-hearted mood with simuls so you're sacking stuff very often uh, at least i do you know and um and just trying to play for attacks and then you know, sometimes you come across an opponent who uh, turns out to be quite a bit stronger than you'd realised, and who's not just uh, letting himself get mated, but uh, or herself get mated, but you know, actually, you know, really resisting and all that. And um, often, what happens is you just run out of ideas, simply, you know, and uh, and then you just end up losing, you know. And uh, but Leela somehow, I mean, that's the most amazing thing. And I'm, you know, I'm watching all these games. I've got them just con continuously on, and uh, you just you just see something and you say, oh, all right, you know, uh, well the opponent sacrifice queen for a rook now so Leela's just a rook down reduced material nothing's going to happen and then yeah you know the, somehow with with just rook and a couple of knights Leela's just you know creating some mating nets or something and you think I don't know how that could have happened how on earth you know and um, and this is what's happening so here you know Leela again 
this uh, avenue of attack finished for Leela. Now we're starting on the H file. Um, so black plays bishop takes c3 and white plays bishop takes c5. And uh, well, here black um, uh, played the move bishop takes d2. I think here black had decided, OK, I'm going to um, swap off pieces. It's time to just, you know, clear everything off and uh, make it nice and easy. But yeah, after bishop d2, rook d2, um, Lila's, uh, well, uh, the engines, uh, Stockfish and Torch are just saying, mm, uh, you know, minus 2.46. And what's the problem? The problem is that after f takes e5, obviously black shouldn't do this, then white plays bishop h3. And um, yeah, <laughs> the, the queen is uh, pinned. This move, rook h1, was about using the h file. But yeah, you know, you see any of Lila's games, you see how um, how unbelievably cunning Lila is in in also, you know, creating lots of uh, uh, small tactics along the way. And well, this is a small tactic, but a big one. It's winning the queen. Uh, funnily enough, black resigned here. And um, uh, you don't actually need to because um, after rook g6 takes takes, um, then black is still OK. I mean, the position is still about balanced uh, or the position is now balanced, you know, because black has two pawns, uh, you know, for the exchange. Um, but, um, well, I think the, the people who are experienced, who've played Leela a lot, uh, know that, uh, well, you know, if they didn't manage to win with Queen odds um, in an equal ending with, you know, <laughs> lots of things, that, all the things that Leela finds in these positions, you're probably not going to survive. So, the, you know, these players like to uh, to end the game at this sort of point and, uh, and just start a new one and try again with an extra Queen. But um, um, but yeah, here uh, you know, black uh, black resigned. Obviously, very upset at uh, missing this tactic to uh, to lose the queen. But I mean, you see, really, um, that it didn't just turn up by accident, right? I mean, um, uh, and to be honest, you know, from uh, this sort of position, I you know, if black had played the the best move, queen e seven, bishop b four, I'd I'd you know, I'd take Leela a hundred percent of the time to uh, to win this game. You know, just not uh, just the things that Leela's doing. It's it's just uh, you know, it's just uh, incredible, and uh, this is well within its uh, its span. So there we are. I mean, this is the the first of uh, a series of um, of quite amazing Queen odds games, and uh, like I said, this is the least spectacular of them all. So uh, you know, you'll just get an idea of what it is. But you know, I think something's very noticeable: the use of pawns, first of all um to um you know to to attack the opponent's pieces and try and knock them off their their, their their squares as quickly as possible and not waiting not trying to develop nicely and then see what to do but just really trying to create chaos open lines as soon as possible i mean that's shocked me absolutely shocked me but when you think about it you say yeah it's quite reasonable and um yeah you know what you're finding is that you know players obviously, you know, lower level than Leela, are finding it hard to anticipate what Leela's doing and always ending up like a move too slow. You know, uh, you're trying to undermine Leela and but Leela's that move ahead, already thought ahead and saying, yeah, I can keep my uh, advantages. And um, and yeah, the other thing that's really impressive about Leela, you know, just uh, obviously not trying to keep its king safe, calculating that, um, well, its king might not be completely safe, but it won't be easy to exploit it, you know, and that's the important thing. Um, it's all about the human player proving that he can uh, exploit the uh, the risks that Leela is taking. And then, you know, the amazing thing as well about this odds play is that, uh, you know, Leela just says, OK, I've achieved something with this first wave of attack. Redeploy. We're going to look now for uh, for something else. And uh, moving from the from the pawns and the G file to the H file. And yeah, you know, at some stage, you know, the human player is getting confused and uh, uh, falling for uh, for big tactics there. So I hope you're um, you're enjoying this, and I hope you you know you you sort of uh, also seeing the you know the real educational value of this because I'm um, you know I, I'm really um, uh, picking up all sorts of things really about you know what you can do with pieces, which you know exceeds my wildest expectations. Right, I just would not have believed any of this was possible, and um, but also yeah you know the the um, the amount of of, of um, leeway you obviously have you know to keep your king safe even in the center shogi style um, the amount that you can do with um, with pawn pushes wing pawn pushes you know and um, uh, just um, and you know that just that ability to keep on finding new stuff to say okay you know very to, to say very concretely very soberly I think for a human it would be but to say okay you know this this path of attack is uh, is finished 
let's find a new one let's keep on moving on and uh, you know that ability is um, is, is yeah, just being displayed in every game by Leela in um, in uh, in odds play so uh, really amazing so I hope you're enjoying it lots more to come lots of, of amazing night odds games as well and rook odds all of this stuff and uh, do keep watching and I hope that uh, you're going to give it a go as well I'm going to do it too don't worry <laughs> I uh, I won't leave you alone and um, and uh, yeah you know just uh, just enjoy it. I do think this is one of the most amazing things I've seen in the past few years in uh, in chess as a whole and not just engine chess. So thanks very much and hope to see you at the next video.